Welcome back to my channel people and happy new year it's 2024 and in today's adventure we are going to create a cool project which is the famous and classic tic-tac-toe game using C++. In this tutorial I will guide you step by step in the process of building your own console based tic-tac-toe application exploring some key concepts of C++ programming along the way. From setting up the game board to implementing player moves and determining the winner you'll gain on some hands-on experience with C++ development. Whether you're a novice developer or looking to enhance your skills, this tutorial offers a fun and practical introduction to game development with C++. So let's get coding and bring this classic game to life. If you enjoy and like this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's always appreciated and it helps to grow the channel. Okay guys, so for the first step, I'm going to minimize VS Code and I'm just going to create a folder here. And we're going to name it Tic Tac then we can just go back to VS Code, open the folder, this one right here. Let's create a file. Let's just name this file main the C++. So just the first thing that we are going to do is to create our entry point, so our main function. And let's do it right here. The next step that we're going to do, we're going to import our IO stream library that contains our input and output stream library, which is necessary for input and output operations, okay? So just type include, and right here, we have to name it IO stream. The next line that we're going to write is the statement that allows you to use the entities from the standard C++ library without explicitly qualifying them with ASTD double dot. Just type using namespace. Now we can test our main function. I'm just going to uh, output something in the console to test our program, okay? So let's type C out and type hello world. Let's uh, type return zero right here and save the changes in our program. The next thing that we're going to do is we have to compile this program using our C++ compiler. So just with control backticks, open the terminal right here. That's a cool shortcut. Let me type ls to see this. So the compiler that we are going to use is clam++, which is the built-in compiler that comes with Mac. So I'm going to type clank++, clank++ plus plus dash o type the name of the program that you want the compiler to spit out so it's going to be game and then we're going to type the name of the file so it's main uh, main that c plus plus let's wait for the program to compile and this is the program now we can test this program so let's type dot slash and then type game And as you guys see, we have a hello world right here, so our program is working correctly. Above of our main function, we're gonna create a couple of global variables. The first thing that we're going to do is to create a 2D array to represent the tic-tac-toe board. It will initialize the numbers one to nine to represent the initial positions of the board. So let's just type it, Carter spaces three and three and then we can initialize the initial values next we need a variable to keep track of the current player either x or zero now we need a flag to determine if the game is a tie so let's just create a boolean variable boo tie and we'll initialize its value to a false value now we need two strings to store the names of the player number one and the player number two so let's just create a string player one with an empty string as a default and we can copy and paste this and repeat it for a number two player. The next step that we are going to work on is to code or display board function. This function is responsible for displaying the current state of the tic-tac-toe board. So let's create a void display board. This function will use a nested loop to iterate over the rows and columns of the space array and print the board layout. This if i it's lower than two condition is used to print a horizontal line between the rows. So yep this is it. Let me show you a little chart right here. So basically we're gonna have three iterations in our for loop. In the first iteration we're going to iterate 
through the spaces array and we're going to display one two and three the second statement is going to display these two vertical lines and the third statement which is the if statement that we have is going to match the condition is going to apply so we're going to display the horizontal line and the second iteration is going to be exactly the same and in the third iteration uh, the condition is not going to apply because the i value is bigger than two so no horizontal line let me minimize the browser right here and I'm going to uh, run the function so we can test it. So let's just copy and paste the display board. Oops, copy and paste the function right here. Let's put that, that. let's put this right here. Let's, um, let me make my terminal bigger. Let me run the compiler. Okay, and let me test the game. And that's it. This is our layout board. So now we can keep working on our next step. So guys, let's create the next function, which it's going to be the process input function. This function will take an input from the current player, validate the input, and then update the game state accordingly. So below here, I'm going to type void process input is going to be a void function as well. The first thing that we are going to do is create a variable uh, int digit this is going to store the digit value that the player is going to enter either from one to nine okay let's send a message let's see out a message to the player so this message will prompt the current player to enter a digit corresponding to the position of the board so now let's grab this input with scene well, next we need to map the digit to the corresponding row or column in the space array so for this we're going to create two variables one row and one column but now we need to check if the input is valid so we're going to have an if statement and put a few conditions to check if the input that enters the user is going to be out of range or if the position is taken already so so recursively we can call itself this a condition until the valid input it's provided right so let's create this if statement right here so right here we are just checking if the digit is lower than one or bigger than nine we're gonna have an input value or if the digit is already taken by an x or a zero which is going to be an input value itself so we're gonna call the process input function until we have a valued input next in our else condition we can just copy and paste this part right here and let me save the changes and if the correct input is provided we're going to make the selected space equal to our current player and then our current player is going to be equal to the correct value which is going to be assigned by this ternary statement right here next we need to create the check game result so it's going to be a boolean function that's going to return either true or false whether one of the players have win the game whether the game's still running or if we have a tie so let me create a bool check game this for loop is going to check whether we have a vertical or a horizontal win for each of the players so we need to have a for loop and then we need to create our first condition first let's check if we have a horizontal win so a horizontal match for the th for all the rows so let's call spaces i and zero if that's equal to spaces one and if that's equal to spaces and or spaces i zero which is the first value it's equal to or spaces i two which is our last value so that's our first condition if we have a horizontal match and now let's check if we have a vertical match which is exactly the same it's just the other way around so let me just grab this part right here i'm gonna copy and paste it and let me just swap the values so if either our horizontal or vertical line matches we're going to return true so now let's check if we have a diagonal win so we just need an if statement right here and it's going to be very similar so let me just copy and paste this part right here and then we just need to check if our first uh, value is going to be equal to our middle value in our column and our middle value in our column is going to be equal to our last value in our uh, last row and the same for the other way around and if that's true we're going to return true so let me just put a comment right here and check the uh, diagonal 
win. Now we need to check if our game is still running. So for that, we are going to need a nested loop. So let me just create a loop. So let me just copy and paste this part right here and change it, the values for J. So we're basically just going to check for every value in the two dimensional array and then have an if condition right here. And basically we're just going to check if we're going to check one by one each space in our two dimensional array. And we're going to check if the, if the spaces are empty. So if we don't have an X or a zero, it means that, uh, that means that they haven't been used. So we return false and the game's still running and we're going to call this function again. So now before or after, I mean, after this for loop, we need to, if none of these conditions have met, that means the, the game is a tie. So let me just put tie equal to true. And then we're going to return uh, false. return false from the function. So this is basically our check game results. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if we have a vertical or horizontal match. Then we're going to check if we have a diagonal match. Then we're going to check if the game is still running. And then if none of the conditions above have been met, we're going to just, uh, that, means, that means the game is a tie. So we're going to return false right here. So we have finally finished with our third methods. Now let's apply them in our main uh, function in our C++ program. So let me just get rid of this display board. I'm going to get rid of this hello world and here we can uh, output to the user enter the name of the first player. Let me copy and paste this part right here and then enter the name of the second player. So now below the enter the name of the first player, we need to get the name of the first player. So let's use the function we'll get line. So get line. Let's grab the scene and player number one. Now we can duplicate this function here, but for second player. Okay. So oops, the second player. Let me save the changes to refactor the code. Next, let's output a message to the player number one that they will use X and output a message to the player number two that they will use zero. So I'm just going to copy and paste this part right here. I'm going to add a player number one here. Let's get rid of, or get rid of this message and is player one. So they will play X. Let's put a space right here and we can copy and paste this code again, but for player number two and use a zero instead. I think this is good enough. Let's refactor the code and below here we can put our while loop. So or while loop and then we're going to check if it's not true. So if the check game results function it's false we're gonna keep running until it's this until it changes to true so here we can display um display board function and then run the next function which is a process the input process input oops i forgot this part and Yep, I guess that's it, right? So we can display the board function again after the while check. Now the next thing that we need to do is to display the results to the player, right? So we can have three results. So let's put an if statement. So if statement and else if right here and then an else condition. So for the first one, let's check if the, oops, the current player it's equal to x and if tie it's false we're going to output to the console the the second player it's the winner so let's grab this part and let's output second player wins we can do the same thing for the next check so let me copy and paste this part so if the current player it's equal to zero and there's no tie we can grab the first player let's just grab this part right here 
and then display uh, player number one wins else and if none of these conditions had been met we can just output the message to the user saying the, there's a tie so and let's put a space right here i think we also need to put a space on on these lines right here and line and line i think this is it right so this will be the end so now we need to test our code. So let me expand the terminal, okay? And compile the code first. Let's see if we don't have any errors. We don't have any errors, so let's run the game and see what happens. So enter the name of the first player. Let's enter Messi. Enter the name of the second player. Let's enter Ronaldo. And here we have the board. So it's Messi's move. Now let's check number one. It's Ronaldo's move. Let's check four. Let's it's Messi's move. Let's check number two. It's Ronaldo's move. Let's check number nine. And now it's Messi again. So let's check three. And it should display a win for Messi. So Messi wins. So it's perfectly working. Let's test the game again. I want to test the game for. Uh, the diagonal win, so Messi, Ronaldo, so let's check it, so one, now let's put a four here, let's put a five here for Messi, let's put a seven right here, and put a nine here, it should be a win for Messi again, and Messi wins, so yeah, so the <laughs> code is perfectly working, this was the end of the tutorial, I hope you guys enjoy it, if you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments down below, have a nice day, and goodbye.